Hello everyone, and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Alan warns Tracy about Ashley's several identities. Alan stepped away as Ashley leaned in to kiss him in Chancellor Park. Ashley was lovely, Alan added, but he couldn't have this kind of relationship with her. Ashley inquired as to Alan's seeing someone. Ashley inquired as to Alan's opinion of her. She struck Alan as being beautiful, intelligent, and fascinating. Ashley reported feeling pulled from both sides. Alan maintained that nothing could work out between them because Genoa City was not his home. Ashley declared that she didn't by Alan's defense. Ashley charged Alan of merely coming to town to psychoanalyze her. Ashley was a wonderful buddy, Alan said, and he felt sad. Was Alan sorry for leading her on, Ashley questioned? Ashley claimed to believe Alan truly gave a damn about her. Ashley bid Alan goodnight and left. Lily inquired at Chancellor Winter's front desk whether Esther had seen Billy. Nobody appeared to know where Billy had been, Lily stated. Though she hadn't met him, Esther claimed to have gotten a weird email from Jill. Jill had asked that Esther forward all of her business correspondence to Billy, Esther informed Lily. Seemingly concerned, Esther inquired as to whether Billy was taking over or Jill was retiring. Nothing was breaking down, Lily replied, and nobody was going anywhere. Arriving, Nate trailed Lily into her office. Lily claimed she had spoken with Jill and that Billy had been right in all he had said. Billy having been given command and not even bothering to show up for work, Lily stated, terrified, her. They all needed, Lily said, to move forward without killing each other. After Billy had not voted Nate onto the board, Nate declared that he knew where he stood with Billy. Mamie had needed to back off, Lily replied, in response to Nate's question about whether they ought to have been more charitable. Billy had texted Lily, and she said it was not good news, when her phone rang. Lily read Nate the text out loud. Billy had said he would be visiting various company offices to get to know the staff and that he had left to give everyone time to calm down. Billy fired the first shot, Lily claimed, and he was heading to the other offices to gather allies. Devin asked Tucker if they might talk at the athletic club. Audra cut in, wondering if they were tired of arguing yet. Tucker declared his want to hear Devon out. Audra made herself excused to pack for the trip to Paris. Devon inquired as to how long they would be gone. If Tucker departed for good, would Devon be bothered, Tucker inquired. Devon said he was used to Tucker being gone. What had originally been the intention with Mamie to take Jill out of Chancellor Winters, Devon asked Tucker. Tucker figured Devon was asking, since someone else was going to be leaving the organization. Power-hungry insider, with a perpetual chip on his shoulder, Billy, Tucker stated of the person in question. Tucker promised to support Devon any way he could and claimed he had never had use for Billy. All Devon needed, he continued, was information. Helping Devon, Tucker added, might be a chance to demonstrate to Devon that he had changed. Tucker will be heard, Devon said, but there won't be a quid pro quo situation. Tucker concurred and recommended Devon to keep an open mind. Tucker expressed no surprise at Billy being an issue. Devon claimed he only wanted leverage against Jill and didn't want Tucker to handle anything with Billy. Tucker declaimed that he had never had a specific plan. Devon was dubious of Tucker's response. Tucker maintained he had been winging things and that, once Mamie joined the company, he had planned to obtain dirt on Jill. Devon stated he would have to believe Tucker. Tucker apologized for not being able to support Devon after Devon acknowledged that the family had not been eye to eye. Devon should let Tucker take care of Billy, Tucker advised. Tucker claimed he was able to take actions Devon was unable to. What was Tucker's plan? Devon asked. Tucker stated if Jill believed Devon had anything to do with Billy's ouster, she would be furious and take revenge on Devon after Billy left. If Devon was to keep his hands clean, Tucker was supposed to handle the dirty work. Tucker suggested Devon needed to make a big show of making amends with Billy in order to maintain Tucker's status as the villain and Devon's innocence. 
The scheme sounded messy and would backfire on them, Devon remarked. Though he appreciated Tucker's offer, Devon answered, no thanks. Sally knocked at Audra's door in her suite. She had been packing for Paris, Audra informed Sally. Sally expressed both her happiness and envy for Audra. When should one cut and run, Sally questioned Audra. Sally clarified for Audra that she was discussing her interior design company, not Adam. Sally said that she had been using her own bank account to pay company bills. Audra advised reviewing the possibilities. Sally admitted that she had thought about returning to fashion, but she didn't want to let him down, since Nick had made an investment in her interior design company. Nick could just deduct the cost on his taxes, Audra remarked. Audra stated Sally needs to follow her intuition because she was gifted in many areas. Did Sally know that Audra had been an artist? Audra asked. It had been enjoyable, but not profitable, Audra admitted. It had been devastating, Audra claimed, to have realized she could not make a career out of painting. Audra claimed that having to decide between a life of hardship and security, she had decided to attend business school. Sally shot back, saying she had always known who she was meant to be and that she wanted to rediscover her passion. Someday, Sally continued, she would really like to see Audra's artwork. Sally will figure out what to do, Audra asserted, if she just kept believing in herself. Audra got a text saying the airline had located earlier Paris planes. Audra declared her excitement at saying au revoir to Ashley and Genoa City. Tucker told Audra that Devon had asked her a favor when she went back to her room after Sally departed. Devon didn't deserve it, Audra remarked, so she hoped Tucker didn't assist him. Devon would provide Billy another chance as a father, Tucker assured Audra, if Tucker could get Billy out of Chancellor Winters. Ashley's personalities quarreled at the Abbott estate. Belle vowed to persevere on love. As Tracy entered, she inquired as to Ashley's conversation partner. Did Ashley see Alan? Tracy asked. Ashley said Tracy asked, because God forbid Ashley have any feelings or emotions. Tracy trying to persuade Ashley that there was anything wrong with her was hurtful, Ashley stated. Why couldn't Tracy embrace her sister for who she was? Ashley questioned. Family, Tracy said, was not the enemy. Tracy answered the ringing doorbell and let Alan in. Excuse me, Tracy said. Alan claimed he wanted Ashley to know he was her friend. When the personalities inside Ashley's head began to clash, Ms. Abbott overthrew Belle. Ashley told Alan angrily that she was bored and worn out with him. Ashley said their relationship had run its course. Ashley sprang from the house, declaring she didn't need to be saved. Returning, Tracy inquired about Alan's opinion. There was more than one personality at play, Alan claimed, and the one he had just met was highly concerning. Though he thought Ashley's personas changed often, Alan claimed it was too soon to diagnose her with dissociative identity disorder. Tracy inquired as to if Ashley's identities were at odds with one another or would be harmful. If someone created several personas, Alan remarked, it was typically to protect themselves. Tracy inquired as to what Ashley needed defense against. Alan questioned if they should get Ashley into treatment, but he was unsure. The real Ashley is in there somewhere, Alan remarked, and they had to find her. What would happen, Tracy wondered, if they couldn't get Ashley? The options weren't many, Alan said.